Hi everybody, this is Shane Armand Rowe with NVIDIA Shield Zone. We're going to show you all about adoptive storage in Android 6.0 Marshmallow. Show you the strengths, the weaknesses, and show you a couple of gotchas you may uh, be concerned with if you're going to be using this in the future. Now this is the only Shield device that is currently outfitted with the Marshmallow upgrade. This is the Shield Tablet K1. The original Shield Tablet, the Shield TV, and the Shield Portable are all still back on Lollipop. So we're going to be using this device as our test bed to show you how adoptive storage works. First off, let me show you the configuration we have in now. If I go over to settings, storage and USB, you can see I have an internal storage, the 16 gigs, of which 11.61 are available and 2.55 gigabytes are used. Also plugged in is an adopted storage card a Samsung SD card, a 32 gigabyte card. It is currently using just over three gigabytes of space. And at the top, you'll see that uh, the total amount of space that I have available is 40, roughly 40 gigabytes, 5.88 gigabytes are used. Now, right now, this is a micro SD card plugged into this uh, Shield tablet, and it has been adopted as internal memory. Now if you go into internal storage and you look, the only thing that's on internal storage at this time are apps and cache data. So if we go and look at the apps, these are all the standard apps that were installed into the system originally. And if you jump yourself over to the Samsung SD card, you will also see that we have a few apps on here, as well as data directories. Currently at this moment, the external card that has been adopted as internal storage is being used as the data drive or what I would consider a legacy drive. That is, files can be written to this through the operating system. So if I were to jump into say my favorite file explorer, Explorer, and I were to look on here, my SD card essentially shows up as my actual SD card because that's where my data is currently being stored. There is no way you'll notice to actually get to the internal storage anymore. Only one device, either internal or adopted, can hold the quote data file system. And I'll show you how that works. Let's jump back into settings. All right, so currently, my dog is gonna be barking. Um, so currently, Hey, knock it off. Sorry. Knock it off. Maybe I'll cut that out. Hey, knock it off. All right, so currently the SD card is acting not only as adopted storage for apps, but it's also acting as our data card. If I uh, bring up my options here, I can format this back as regular portable memory. I can eject it, I could rename it. If I go look at the internal storage, I also have options, and one of them is migrate data. Now data can be migrated back and forth between internal and external, but you do have to remember that if your external card's data exceeds your internal space, you can't move it back. Keep that in mind. So let's hit Migrate Data. It's going to say it's going to take about five minutes. It's going to th free up 3.11 gigabytes on the Samsung SD card. Now, I could do this right now, but since I'm recording, it's going to interrupt where the file is being stored. So in order to do this move, I actually have to physically shut this recording off because where this recording is being saved is going to change. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. And then we'll come right back to the screen. Well, actually, we won't come back to the screen. But, uh, um, yeah, okay, fine. All right, and we're back. So what we did is we moved our, quote, data 
from the external adopted storage to the internal storage of the device. Now if we go into internal storage, you see images, videos, things that you would expect to see. Now if I were to go into a file manager now and take a look, I would see things internally like I normally would. So in reality, you can only have one device, one storage medium per device that can hold your quote, quote, data, right? So right now, because I have this set for internal storage and I'm recording, we're not going to move it again. You'll have to take my word for it that we can shift it back and forth. And I'll show you real fast um, how that works, how you do that. You go back to internal storage. Um, I'm sorry, go to external storage and migrate data. This will allow you to take everything and move it back out. Now, but you have to remember anything that uses the Android file system that expects to see slash SD card will require that this removable micro SD card be the one inserted. If you have a piece of software, if you have an app that requires a widget, or that you use as a widget. The widget will die if you take the card out, if the card is holding your, quote, data. All right, so we're not going to move it because I don't want to have to stop this recording again. But suffice to say, as you can see, we have here on the external adopted storage, we have a handful of applications, Moonreader, Unkilled, Yahtzees, and Pinball. And if we go to our home screen, you can see that these items are actually installed. I can run Zen Pinball. And it may or may not run the way it's supposed to because I've already moved it once. Sometimes the data just doesn't quite work right, but it looks like it's working fine. So now, what happens if I eject the SD card that contains those applications? Well, run Zen, one Zen Pinball is running in the background, so I eject Notice that all of the icons corresponding to the app are gone. If I go in here and look for unkilled, it's not here. It is, in fact, gone, dead, and buried. What happens if I try to run it? I get absolutely nothing. Plug the card back in. And in a moment or two after it picks the card up, the apps will restore and resume. Of course, if they were running previously, they won't be running now. Okay, so that more or less works, just as you would expect it to do. All right, let's go back to storage. So now I know the big question is, what about USB? Can we use USB devices for adopted storage? There has been word all over the GeForce forums that the Nexus Player supports OTG devices as adopted storage. We're going to find out right now whether that's true or not for the Shield line of products, or at least the Shield Tablet K1. I'm going to insert a 64 gig flash drive with built-in OTG, and uh, let's see what it says. There it is. Okay, so now it's going to look at the drive, and look, it's listed as portable storage. So I'm assuming that if I went into a file manager right now, that there would be a USB drive. Well, I'd have to probably exit because I'm not sure it picked it back up. Let's get back out. We're going to do the full battery here. Uh, internal storage is what we expect it to be. And um, let's see, does it show the other device on here? It doesn't right now. But I bet we could go and browse from here. Let's take a look. Storage. USB drive, and there you go. So there's not much on here. I used it. I've been using it for backing up. So can we format this as internal memory? Let's find out. Hmm. No format is internal. So what if we just hit format? No. Nope. Format is portable storage. So there's no way to convert this drive into internal memory. All right, well, okay, so maybe it knows it's a flash memory and it's not going to use it. So, But if you plug in a hard drive via OTG, surely that will work. Let's find out. A nice big fat hard drive right here, USB cable attached. Let's plug that guy in and see what happens. Drive spinning up. Take a moment or two for it to pick up. 
There it is. Oh, portable storage. How about now? Can we format this guy? Nope, format is portable storage. Absolutely not. All right, so OTG devices on the Shield Tablet K1 cannot be adopted as internal storage. Oh, but wait, I know what you're thinking. We've already got one, so maybe if I get rid of this one, it'll work. Let's find out. Let's eject this. Eject. Ejecting. And it is gone. Now let me plug this back in, the OTG drive. Let it spin up again. Mm -hmm. Hey, take your time. There it is, portable storage. Can it be formatted? Settings, format, no. So what about a device that could be done? Let's make sure that this still works, right? You guys got to keep me on the up and up. So I'm going to get rid of this OTG drive. I'm going to physically remove, I ejected it, but it's still in there. I'm going to eject this 32 gig card. I don't have any fingernails, so this always proves interesting. Sorry for the noise. Ah, oh, come on. I think I'd be getting good at this the number of times I've shot this thing. Let's see if I've got something I can kind of pry it out with a little here. There we go. All right, so now I've got a nice fat 128 gigabyte SD card to put in here. Let's see what happens. All right, we plug it in. What do we got? Unsupported Lexar SD card. All right. Ah, we can use this as internal storage. Yay. Format and erase. There's no way to adopt and still keep your files on the device. Can't be done. It has to format and encrypt. So while this is going, let's talk a little bit more. And I need to plug the tablet in here. We don't want it to die in the middle of all this fun. So what have we learned here? We've learned that so far we can only have one adopted device at a time, which is probably true. We found out that OTG devices, flash drives, or USB external hard drives will not be mountable as internal storage. We've also found that we can only use one storage uh, medium to hold data. And if I didn't, if I felt like breaking out the camera and, and hooking everything up, I would show you that if you move the data onto one card and replace it. So for example, let's say that I move data to this SD card. Then I took this SD card out and put in the 32 gigabyte card. What do you think would happen? Well, I'll have no data folder. I'll have no file system. If I plug the device into a PC, I won't see anything. I can't copy anything to it. And anything that actually writes to the quote, quote, SD file system won't work. If you try to take a screenshot, it will say, can't store the screenshot. If you try to record video, it will tell you, you can't record video. Um, if, you, um, uh, if you try to use an app that requires a widget, it doesn't work if you've ejected the card. There's a whole bunch of gotchas involved in this. As you can tell, it takes quite a while to format this card. It is a big card after all. And it's got to encrypt it as it goes. Now this is 128 gigabyte. Can you imagine if you actually could stuff a one terabyte drive on here and have it adopt as internal storage, how long that would take to format? Probably a long time, I would guess. It's still going at only 20%. So what does all this mean? What is the bottom line? What have we discovered here today? If you're going to use adoptive storage, buy the biggest card you can and leave it in there. You can't use both internal and external storage to store your loose files, your ROMs, your MKV files, whatever you want to put. You only get to pick one. If you pick the nice, big, fat external 
micro SD card that you were hoping to put all of your ROMs and movies and stuff on, you got to leave the card in. If you take it out, you'll lose your file system. You also lose the ability to transfer via PC unless you have a designated Android file system. We've decided that you can move uh, apps around between internal and external adopted storage. We also know that Android will choose themselves where to store the file if you do an install. So that's about it. I could sit here all day and let this thing format, um, but we're going to end it here. If you have any questions on adoptive storage, talk to me online, nvidiashieldzone.com. Go to the chat room. I'll have an article posted. I hope you enjoyed this look. Thanks so much for watching. This is Shane R. Monroe. We'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.